Howdy folks, it's Sage with the Hunting Gear Guy. This is the Volkortsen Bolt Release and Competition Hammer combination. Uh, I just got this really for the hammer. Uh, the bolt release I can just dremel in five minutes like I did in this video or this video. Okay, I don't know which side it's on. Anyways, that's easy enough. That's five minutes of dremeling. Um, but what is a little bit harder is, uh, is getting a decent trigger pull out of the Ruger uh, regular Ruger 1022 triggers. They're right around four and a half to six pounds, somewhere in there. Uh, the BX trigger will take it down to two and a half. I was curious if this would do it for a lower price point because uh, this whole combo was 45 bucks, which is quite a bit lower than the BX trigger, which in here in Canada is right around $90. So uh, why don't we uh, uh, go ahead and install this in a Ruger 1022. Now this will be the 1022 that we're going to install that hammer in. I can confirm we have nothing in the magazine, nothing in the chamber. So why don't we go ahead and test our, uh, our trigger pull weight in this factory. Uh, trigger it's got some reps in in it so it's already worked in uh but let's see what it pulls at uh, four pounds 12 ounces so just before five pounds let's try that again And five pounds, four ounces. So uh, right around five pounds is uh, is really what this trigger is pulling at. Let's see if that uh, that Volkortsen hammer is going to make much of a difference. Now the first thing I'm going to do is remove that action screw. That's a five thirty seconds. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that guy. Now I'm going to make sure that my safety is in the middle position. There's not really a middle position. It kind of wants to wiggle out either way. So you might have to hold this as you remove the action from the stock, just so that it stays in the middle and then pull it out. And then using that same five thirty seconds, I can push out the pins that hold the, uh, the trigger pack in there. And I'm just pushing those to the side and then I can just pull them right out. All right, inside our Volkortsen and hammer kit, we've got hammer, spring, couple pins, and a bushing, and the instruction manual. All right, let's pretend to use the instructions here. So, so far we've taken the trigger group out. Next it says to take out the hammer strut from the back of the factory hammer. So what we're gonna do is take the safety off, hold that hammer as we press the trigger and let it go forward. There's the strut and spring, come on. There she goes, and there it's out. Next it says to drift out the hammer pin, which is gonna be right there. So let's get an Allen key or something that'll poke that out. It's got an Allen key here. I'm just gonna use that to push it in, take it out of there. And let's just pull it out of there along with our spring. Next, it says to remove the trigger pivot pin, which is right there. So out comes the trigger pivot pin and all our other sear and hammer or sear and trigger and spring. Next, I'm going to pull out that trigger plunger right here and the plunger spring should be just behind there. I'm going to make sure I'm not confusing that one for the uh, Volkortsen one because it's probably important that we don't. Uh, here is the new one. I'm just going to pop that in there and then go ahead and put that in the hole so that it's in the right spot. This is just a close-up difference of the Ruger and the Volkortsen hammer and kind of what they look like. All right, next up I've taken their spring and put it into the sear. I'm going to take that mess and put it in here. There's a little uh, spot there for this spring to go into, so I'm going to put it in there. And then they give you this little pin here to just kind of hold everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that pin in there. And that just kind of holds this whole thing together here. All right, now I'm ready to put that uh, assembly back into the trigger group. You're going to need a pin. I'm going to grab this uh, sh this shorter one here to uh, to put it in. And really this pin that I just put in, that's just for assembly. That's just to hold the whole thing together to make it a little bit easier. Hold on to your plunger as you're wiggling that uh, that trigger in there. And then all I'm looking for is for that silver glint of the pin uh, that I'm replacing to show. Then I can take my trigger pin and push it out. And you can see it popped out on the other side there. And now 
this is good to go. Next, I'll have to get the Volkortsen hammer in there. Now I'll take my factory spring. I want it so that that dog leg is facing to the down, and I'm going to put it on the right hand side of this. I need to make sure that that doesn't get too far on me. Next, we'll actually maybe what I'll do is just kind of hold them a little bit high on me. And next, we're going to put them in there. Now, this is a little bit hard to do uh, on camera, but what I need to do is push it down so that that, uh, that hole there uh, is uh, uh, aligned. And when it starts to get close, you can kind of go from the other side and push it until it goes in there. Now, when we have this in, now's the time to check if we need to shim this thing or not. They did supply a couple of extra shims, and the way you know if you need shims is you, you just rock this hammer back and forth. And you can see that I've got a little bit of space in there. I could probably fit one, maybe two of those shims. So I'm going to go ahead and press that uh, uh, that pin out. I'm going to try one of those uh, shims on there. Now it says to put the shims between the hammer and bushings. So I'm going to pull that bushing out. I'm going to try one shim on there. And then I'm going to take my spring and reinstall in the trigger housing. Now with one shim in there, still got some space. Let's try two shims. And I'm adding the second shim. And then I popped it in there. And now there's still a little bit of wiggle, but not nearly as much slop as before. Next up, I'm gonna change the hammer spring with the Volkortsen one. Uh, this is one, <laughs> one area where you might, might wanna wear uh, safety glasses because I need to remove this uh, plate here and it's got quite a bit of pressure on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a dimple in my table here, press it down, pull that plate off. There's the factory one and there's the Volkortsen one. I'm gonna put that Volkortsen hammer spring on there. And then I'm going to very carefully press that down. That plate needs to be a little bit further on. There it goes. And then we've got the Volkortsen spring on the strut. Now to reinstall the new hammer spring, I'm gonna put it on fire mode. You'll need it on fire mode, by the way, to get that hammer in. I'm going to pull the trigger, push it forward. I'm just going to hold on to that and sneak it through that hole in the back. And then I should be able to pull it back and the sear should engage on it. So I should be able to test the safety. I'm just hanging on to that hammer just in case. Safety off and I'm able to press that in. So it, that trigger is working. I'll test the reset. Why is it not resetting? All right, I opted to put in the factory trigger return spring. That's the tr the spring that's just behind this detent right here. That's because it just wasn't uh, resetting reliably. So now it uh, it is. I can press the trigger back, assuming my safety's off. And on the reset, it's got enough power to push that back out to, uh, to reset properly. So let's see what that uh, did to my trigger press. Now, if I was gonna get real picky about this, I would uh, try to pick a trigger spring that was just light enough to reset it, but reliably. Uh, this is reliable, but it's a little bit too strong. Let's just see what that's done to our, uh, our trigger press here. And now we're right around three pounds. And just on three pounds there. So a little bit of a heavier trigger press, but uh, I think that's okay because the things I've gotten, the uh, the wiggle is is gone now on that hammer, and uh, it's got quite a bit of a cleaner uh, pull on it now. So that you can see there's very little creep there up to the trigger, and then it's a it's a pretty crisp pull on it. Now it's not the same as one of the trigger packs you can get for for these things, um, but it's pretty good, pretty good compared to the uh, the factory trigger, and uh, a pretty decent very inexpensive way of upgrading the Ruger 1022 trigger. Thanks for watching.